If purple is your color, then this is the boutonniere for you. The boutonniere we'll be making today includes some erygium, sea lavender, and alstroemeria. Supplies needed include pruning shears or floral scissors, floral tape, some purple ribbon, some scissors to cut the ribbon, hot glue to secure the ribbon, and some corsage pins for the finished boutonniere. So to start off, we will take some of this erygium and place it next to the other main flower, which is the alstroemeria. I like to keep the boutonnieres nice and tight, so I don't want, like them to be so wide or too tall because I don't want to risk them looking like corsages. I like to have a wider base that forms into somewhat of a cone on top. So we'll use these erygiums as the base. So I'll put two of them together, possibly just like this, where one is slightly taller than the other. And then let's select the alstroemeria that we'll use. And when selecting the flowers, you should always make sure that they don't have any bruises or rips or tears. Before I cut anything, I always like to just place them next to each other to see what it would look like. And I'm thinking that I only want to use one alstroemeria, so let me try to pull the others back and see what it would look like with just the alstroemeria and the, and the two erygiums. And I like that look, so that's what I'm going to go with. But maybe I will select an alstroemeria that's a little bit bigger, such as this one on this side. So I'll go ahead and snip away the other alstroemeria that we will not be using. And I'll try to keep this leaf for now. Uh, well, it's a little bit yellow on top, so I don't like to use any leaves that are dried out. So I will clip that one as well or pull it off. The lotus that we cut off a lot of stems, flower stems here, and I don't want it to be so thick here. So I'm going to work on it in trying to cut it a little bit tighter. So that's what it looks like after I cleaned it up. Now back to the erygiums. And these two naturally line up how I would like them to line up, so that's great. And then you want to inspect the blooms themselves to make sure everything looks okay. And I'm seeing that this one has a little bit of a dried leaf part to the leaf, so I will just select this one instead to use. And I will cut them apart anyway, so it doesn't matter that the, where the heights are in relation to each other. So now I have three separate stems and I will just place them next to each other and see how I like it. As you place the stems together, keep in mind the length of the design itself. So as you can see, if I left it like this, it's a fairly long design already. So I wouldn't want to go much higher here. So this would be the top of the boutonniere, and then this would be the bottom, unless I just go ahead and clip off these leaves, and that will give me an extra centimeter where the arrangement or the flower portion is shorter. And I think I do want to do that, so I will go ahead and pull these leaves off just so I can keep the top portion a little bit shorter. That's how I would like it. So I will go ahead and tape it together. And I'll just do two at a time, just because it's a little bit difficult to manage three. I just wrapped enough tape to keep the stems where I would like them. I'm not going to wrap all the way down to the bottom just yet. Okay, and now let's put on the next erygium stem. Erygium does have a forward-facing side. See how when you look at it from the side view, it's you're only seeing it from the side. So the front is here and you want the front to be the facing outward when the boutonniere is on the lapel. So just pay attention to that while you tape it all together. Just did one round 
And now this is the perfect time to adjust it while the tape isn't too tight. So I just gently twist on the stem to turn the uh, erygium forward. And I can do the same with the first stem, hopefully, because I had not put that much tape on it. And so now I would like to add some of the sea lavender. And the sea lavender, just like any other or most other flowers, will also have a different shape to them. See how this one is a smaller bunch and this one forms a little bit of a tri upside down triangle. And of course we have other options, but let's just go ahead and, and use these and see what it looks like. See, I'm not really liking that look because it looks too top heavy now. So I probably do want to use a smaller stem just like this one. And that actually looks good. I would just add another, maybe a smaller bunch up here. So I will go ahead and snip this one off. And I will tape this one on. Oh, and I'm noticing that I didn't notice this one before, but this leaf doesn't look so pretty, so I will cut that. See, I pulled it down so that the purple portions would show and not just the leafy, branchy, green part of it, because I do want it to look fuller in that space. And now I'll just layer on some more of the sea lavender behind to fill it in. Okay, so that looks about right. Let me snip off the rest of that. I'm now noticing how the, the erygium is a little too close to the alstroemeria. So I'll try to figure out which stem this is so I can pull it down a little bit. But you have to be really gentle. And I'm taking a look at it and I do want it to have some more of a, a conical shape at the top. So let's look for a really thin piece up there. And so I'm seeing this one in the center here, which looks more thin. So I'll go ahead and use that. And I'm going to snip off this branch here because it lost its blooms. That looks great. So I'll get rid of the other stems that I won't be using. And when you're cutting the stems off of the main stem, try to make it nice and clean cut and not have a little stub out like that because it will show up underneath the tape and you will want to wrap ribbon around it. So having it as smooth as possible is a great idea. And then as I'm wrapping, I'm seeing this little nub here. So I'm going to try to smooth it out a little bit by just snipping off that little point that's sticking out. All right. So as far as how much stem to leave down here, I usually do about an inch and a half to two inches. So let me go ahead and cut that off and then wrap all the way to the bottom. And with this floral tape, you'll notice that as I was wrapping, I actually pulled on it to stretch it out because there is adhesive within the tape itself. So when you pull on it, it releases that adhesive. Okay, so when I get towards the bottom, I will go past the bottom part. And then I will fold over that bottom portion so I can seal in the stems. And that way it'll help to retain the moisture because these boutonnieres will not be in any water. But one thing you could do is to spritz them every few hours with a little spray bottle. Don't soak them, just, just give it a little bit of spritz, like a mist. Okay, so now with this tape, I will fold it over onto the stem again, just to cover that folded over portion. And then of course you can just rip it and press it down so that it's nice and smooth. 
All right, so now we're ready for the ribbon. So to start the ribbon, since this uh, floral tape is a little bit sticky, you could just put the, oops. You could just put the ribbon on there and press it down slightly and it'll somewhat hold itself, but hold it with your thumb and then wrap it around so that it covers the end. And for the very first uh, round, you wanna make sure that it's nice and even with the bottom so you're not seeing any of that uh, floral tape. Okay, and then at this point, just wrap it on up and try to keep a similar distance between the ribbons so you have it nice and even and neat looking. And do wrap it nice and tight. Okay, so after you've gone over the front side and covered up all the tape, you want to end the ribbon on the back side of the boutonniere. And that is where you would put a little bit of hot glue to secure the ribbon in place. Okay, and then just hold and press onto that ribbon where the glue is, just to make sure it's dried. And then, you can just snip with scissors as close to that little glue dot as possible. Okay, there you go. You have a completed boutonniere. And the only step left is to add a couple of boutonniere pins so that it's ready for the special day. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. And if you would like any of the supplies that I've used today, they'll be in the description below.